What's up YouTube, it's SoCal Flyer, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do your pre-flight in Microsoft Flight Sim in the most realistic way possible. The procedure I'm going to show you today is similar to the one I use in the real world, with just a few modifications uh, given that we're in the sim and not an actual airplane. That being said, you shouldn't use anything you see in the tutorial today in place of real world flight training from a certified flight instructor. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. So I have us loaded up cold and dark on the ground at Glendale Municipal Airport in the Phoenix area and we are in the 172 G1000, the default one for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, this is the plane I fly in the real world um, and it's the one I'm going to conduct this tutorial in. Um, it's important to note that most of the procedures you see me do will also be transferable to any other light single engine plane that you want to fly in Flight Sim. So the very first thing I do when I get out to the plane in the real world is I use the dipstick and check the left and right fuel tanks, check their fuel levels and see if I have enough fuel to complete the flight for the given day. Obviously I can't physically check the fuel tanks like that in the sim, so what I'm going to do is come up to the fuel menu by clicking on the weight icon. Here I can adjust my fuel level manually and set the payload values for my pilot and passengers as well as cargo. The biggest thing I want to make sure here is that I stay below the maximum takeoff weight in the bottom right corner. The maximum takeoff weight is the max total weight that you're allowed to take off with in the given aircraft that you're flying. Um, if you take off too heavy, you're going to have trouble climbing and your flight characteristics are going to be all out of whack. Um, and it's, it's, it's a dangerous scenario. So you wanna make sure you stay below that um, maximum takeoff weight. Not only is it safer, but it's also the law. So you can see here, I've loaded up with a 100% fuel because why not, fuel is free. Um, and given this scenario of 270 pound people, I'm at 2,367 um, out of 2,558. So I'm well below that maximum there. Um, so I could go ahead and add more passengers and cargo if I wanted to, but just make sure that if you add too much weight in the payload area that you substitute by taking some gas out of the tank, um, you just have to stay below that number there. Um, so once we've completed that, we made sure we're below max takeoff weight, we can count that as basic weight and balance and fuel calculations complete. So we can go ahead and close that menu. And now it is time for our cockpit initialization checklist. Now this checklist is the first one I do when I get out to the plane. I just make sure that all the switches are in the correct position from the previous flight uh, and that some of the basic systems have functionality. Um, so the first item on the checklist is to make sure that our parking brake is set. This little lever down here is pulled towards us in the set position like so. Then we will come down to the fuel selector switch. We will turn it to the right, back to both to the left, and back to both, just make sure that there's freedom of movement in all directions. Next, we will come to the fuel shutoff valve and ensure that it's pushed full in in the off position. We will come up to the trim wheel and we can move the trim wheel and set it so that the little line matches up with the takeoff trim setting, like so. Next up is our mixture. We're gonna make sure that our red mixture knob is pulled to the idle cutoff position, like so. Same with our throttle. We're gonna make sure the black throttle knob is pulled full out into the closed position. Next, we will go to the alternate static valve knob. We're gonna push it out and then push it back in. Make sure that it has freedom of movement and we're gonna leave it full in in the off position. Then we will come over to our lights and electrical switches. We're gonna ensure that all of them are off except for the beacon. We always leave the beacon light on because if there is electrical power to the airplane, um, we need our anti-collision light, in this case, the beacon light, uh, to be on. So we just leave it on all the time so we don't forget to turn it on in any scenarios. Next, we will come to our white avionic switches and ensure they're in the off position. Then we can come to our red master battery switch and turn both of those on. Okay. 
Now we will wait for our primary flight display to load up. We're going to wait for those X's, the red X's to disappear and our artificial horizons show in the background. This can take anywhere from 20 to 30 seconds. Okay, so once our primary flight display has all warmed up, we can go ahead and re-verify that we don't have any red X's over the airspeed indicator, our altimeter, our heading indicator, or our artificial horizon in the background. So everything right now looks good. Next, we can head over to our engine instruments and ensure that none of them are enunciating flashing red except for oil pressure, that one's okay. Uh, likewise, we can come over and check our enunciators over here in the right and ensure that low volts, low vacuum, as well as oil pressure is illuminated. Next, we're going to come back over to the engine instruments gauge and check our fuel quantity, gallons remaining. Um, the fuel gauge in the plane is not the most accurate a lot of the times, but you just want to eyeball it and see that it is somewhat similar to the fuel that you put in the plane and that you tested yourself. Uh, we know from the fuel menu earlier that we are at a hundred percent gas. I mean, you can see right now that it's indicating near full. So that matches up. That works good. Next, we can come down to the engine soft key. We're going to come over to the system soft key and then click on gallons remaining. So now we're manually telling the system how much fuel we have in the tanks. So we know from our pre-flight planning that we have full tank of gas. So we're going to come to the highest option available to set at here, which is 53 gallons. And we're going to go ahead and click that. Now, once we click that, you can see here that our gallons remaining is going to go to 53. So that is perfect, like so. Once our gallons remaining is set, we can click the back soft key once again. And this will bring us back to the home menu. After setting and checking our fuel, we can come over to our avionics switch and turn on the bus one. Once we turn on the bus one, we're gonna be listening for a fan or a whine uh, near the front of the cockpit. You guys may or may not be able to hear it, but you should in, in your sim at home. So we'll go ahead and turn that switch on. Once you verify that you can hear that fan, go ahead and turn it off. Then we'll go ahead and do the same with the bus two switch on the right and listen for a fan once again. Once that's been verified, go ahead and turn that one off. After checking our avionics fans, we can come over to our flaps switch on the right side of the cockpit. We've got this little lever here. We're gonna go ahead and move that down to give us full flaps. So we're gonna put that switch all the way to the bottom, like so. Once the flap has been fully extended, we can verify with our own eyes to the left that the flap has been extended as well as to the right as well. You can see the flap on that side there. After we do our flaps check, we can come on down and check the lights. So we're going to go ahead and turn all of our light switches to the on position. Once that has been done, we can head to the external camera and do a virtual walk around to verify that the lights are all operational. So on the left wing here, we have our red nav light, as well as our pulsating strobe light. Um, so those seem appear to be working uh, correctly. On the back tail here, we have our blinking beacon light, as well as a illuminated landing light on the rear. Um, those appear to be working as well and move around to the right side of the aircraft. We have our green navigation light as well as another pulsating strobe light uh, on that wing. That appears to be good. Uh, and then we'll move around and check our super bright landing and taxi lights and make sure that those are all illuminated. Um, and those appear to be uh, illuminated like so as well. So our light check uh, has passed the test. We're going to go back into the cockpit and we can turn off those switches to minimize our electrical usage. Once our light check has been complete, we can go ahead and turn off the master battery. 
That completes our cockpit initialization checklist. Now we can go ahead and perform a 360 walk around. So I'm going to go to the external view. I'm going to start on the left side of the plane and I'm going to first check my ailerons. Now when I turn the control yoke, whatever direction I'm turning towards, I want the aileron to go up and the opposite wing should move down. The two ailerons should always be opposite of one another. So if I'm turning to the left, like you can see the left wing, the aileron here moves up. On the right side, it should go down. Vice versa, I can go ahead and check the right side. Go ahead and turn towards the right. You can see my right wing aileron has gone up and conversely, the left one has gone down. Um, I can go back to neutral, um, so that looks good. Next, we'll come down to the back of the aircraft. I'm going to visually scan my horizontal stabilizer here and ensure that there's no dents or, or bruises or any kind of missing part that I can notice with my bare eye. Um, everything appears to look good. Um, while I'm there, I can go ahead and check my elevator. So I'm going to pull full back on the flight stick, ensure that the elevator comes up, and then push down, and ensure that the elevator goes down like so. Once I've checked that, I can do the same with our vertical stabilizer here. I'm going to visually scan for dents or missing pieces, uh, missing screws. I don't see any here in the sim. Um, and then I will go ahead and do the same with the rudder. So I'll put my feet on the rudder pedals and do full right rudder, see a full deflection to the right, and full left rudder, like so. Back to neutral. After checking the vertical stabilizer, I can go ahead and verify that all of my antennas are undamaged and in the correct positions. So we have two antennas here uh, sticking out of the top of the vertical stabilizer, as well as three antennas coming out of the fuselage of the aircraft. Um, those are not bent and they appear to be um, in working condition. Um, once we get those major parts inspected, we can go ahead and just do a rough walk around and just ensure that everything looks like it's in the correct position. We don't have anything sticking out, anything unusual that we haven't seen before. Um, like I said, in the real in the real world, I would do a much more thorough walk around um, and investigate some small parts around the plane. Um, but with the simulator, I'm limited to how much I can show you guys. And with that, we have completed our pre-flight checklist. From this point forward, we could conduct our normal operating startup checklist. I hope you guys were able to learn something from the tutorial today. Like I said, this procedure mimics what I would do in the real world uh, before my first flight of the day, and it's a little fun something you can add to your normal flights and routine just to add a little bit more realism. If you guys have any questions or comments about something I did, uh, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and fly safe.